This is part two of the colorism reaction. And where I left off was let me explain how they did that or why they did that. A lot of things go wrong in life, all right? A lot of our grandparents, because I'm a generation extra, my grandparents are the generation before the baby booms, and my mom and them are baby boomers. Well, my dad's not because he's booming from the heavens. But, you know, a lot of racist things happened in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Not, it started getting a little bit lighter in the 90s, in the mid, early 2000s. But prior to that, interracial dating was one in America against the law until like the 60s. I, you can go Google um, the Lovings versus Virginia, which is my state. And that made a crucial choice in the laws. Because by law, you literally cannot treat somebody like shit. You cannot tell somebody who they can and can't fall in love with. And that's one thing in the world that no one on earth can help. You cannot help who you fall in love with and uh, not sustain a guy I used to support until I found out that he didn't like interracial shit. Uh, somebody Miller, like Kamar, Omar Miller, but it wasn't even that. And it's not my nephew. It's, um... Some guy, he was building an all-black school. You know, that guy. So my nephew is also named Omar. So um, to my nephew, I'm sorry about that. But to that jackass, I'm not sorry. Because he is hardcore against interracial relationships. He is hardcore against white people. Mostly white men. And I don't think that that's fair. I've met plenty of white men that were behind black people. And would bend over backwards and die for black people. And that was before I was enlisted in the United States Army. I met many of white men, Asian men, and black men that will lay their lives down for my black ass, or in my case, my multicultural ass, which is like America's ass. You see that? Anyway, all jokes aside, my soldier brothers rock these damn things here, will lay their ass down and die for me. Just like I was going to lay my ass down and die for them. And we will all lay our asses down and die for all of you. So support your soldiers. Because in the military, there's only one color. Green. Y'all probably can't see that. So let me get an old ACU. And crumble everything in the path. Green. Show the world we're big and mean. Now, I'm going to explain this reverse racism, this color wheel, this I grew up mixed. My siblings and I all share different shades of brown. I'm high yellow. The sister born above me is high yellow. The sister born under us is off white. The sister born under her is brown. The sister born under her is high yellow. The brother born under her is off-white. The sister born under her is brown. And not like dark brown. We're like really, really light brown. So when people see us, they know we're mixed. But most of my siblings and my family in general on both sides don't acknowledge our entire family background. I acknowledge our Cherokee heritage because I'm Cherokee on both sides. I acknowledge our black heritage because I'm black on both sides. And I acknowledge our white heritage because we're white on one side which happens to be my mom's side, which is why I lost my mom at Scottsville at the flea market or farmer's market because she blended right in with the white people. And I had just lost my dad not too long ago, so I was exceptionally panicky. Okay, so that being off to the side, when I was coming up through school, and I've told you guys this a million times for those who have been watching, it was always half-breed this, half-breed that. You're not a real nigger, you're a half-nigger. And for white people was... You're not a real honky, you're a half honky. So you see the trouble I had growing up of knowing where the fuck to fit in. That wasn't really an option. There were no Mexicans in school, so I couldn't blend in with them. But I had curly hair and I was black because I thought that I was just black. All right? I thought I was black and I was lucky because all the other black kids in school had typical black hair. Except for a couple of girls who were mixed. And those same girls 
told me that I would never be good enough for a black woman. Eventually, if you get told something enough, you start to believe it. I didn't believe it until I got 14 where a black girl almost got me killed. I stopped dating black chicks after that. Period. No exceptions. I don't give a damn if you're the most beautiful black chick in the world. Carry on. Carry on. It's nothing personal against all black girls, but after that shit, I learned a very valuable lesson. You better screen your phone calls, and you better screen your dates, and you better find out who they saw before they saw you, before you're staring down the barrel of a fucking gun at 14 years old against a 23-year-old. Year and a half before that, a girl that I was in love with at the time, it's puppy love, but it's real to the puppy, told me to give her space. I gave her five days, and in those five days, not only did she have sex with someone else, she bought that bastard on my porch. And then he got on the James Williams Express, and he missed those steps off the porch. He learned how to fly the hard way. Now, back to the story I had. I'm coming through school, and up until the fifth grade, I didn't know I was Native American. Had no fucking clue. Until the teacher pointed that shit out. And I never believed her until I came home and had to ask my mom. And she was like, yeah, you know, your dad's mother is Native American and your dad's mom before her is Native American. And my mom's mom, which is still the confusing factor on if she's black and Cherokee or just Cherokee. Because she's never had black people's hair. Not saying that that's bad hair. Just saying, from our point of view, we really don't need relaxers like talking about it. But anyway, I'm fixing on going back to using a relaxer because these curls are getting on my nerve and I'm tired of spending a fuck ton of money on hair grease. Okay? Of course, if these guys want to sponsor me and my channel, I'll gladly spend a fuck ton of money on hair grease. But you know, when I get out of the shower, it's a pain in the ass to wash my hair, grease my hair, go about my day, make the ponytail look somewhat decent. Anyway, that being said, curls kind of suck. So... Miss Conrad made me do more cultural shit, and I got my ass beat for carving a canoe out of bars of soap, only to have the canoe not look like a canoe at all, look like a fucked up ass floating device. So I learned these things. By the time I got to middle school, it got a little bit more towards the Native American stereotypes. They never called me Scout. They started calling me Chief, Red Man, Banana. Those kind of things. And I'm like, you know, passing it off and just letting it go because I got picked on a lot all through school. All through school. And then I got to high school. And in high school, I got a job at a bowling alley where this one dude would not stop calling me fucking chief. And I was like, dude, you know I'm like black, right? He's like, yeah, you're not all the way black. What, 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 what tribe are you mixed with? And have you been to the reservation? I was like, well, if you must know, I'm part Cherokee. And this story changes very because I don't tell everybody everything that happened when you're 16 years old and you're working and some guy comes to the job who's having problems. And he's always playing, I got friends in low places. And all you get um, addressed as is the word chief. And then the more you tell them, dude, my name tag's right here. It doesn't say chief. If I can get to my army, yeah. I can. And I will. And get to my army patch, though. No. It's just my name plate, so they'll go reading too into it. That says Williams. All right. So I had something like this on my chest at 16. It had my whole first name, not my last name like this one, like they give you in the army because you're only identified by last names in the army. Unless you're in real good with certain um, NCOs and shit like that. So. This dude wouldn't stop calling me Chief. He started pissing me off. And this is all basically Lou Diamond Phillips' fault in the movie Renegades. Because every time somebody called him Chief in Renegades, he'd flip the fuck out. And I know you're all thinking, James, you're off track. No. I'm coming around right now. I got the devil and the four black stallions after my ass, but I'm coming right around from that Scott Bell movie. I don't remember it, but it's a Scott Bell movie. With two prominent black actors, by the way, who were darker than me. And one was playing Esther and one... The ball guy, I don't know what the hell, he's playing a lot of shit. But anyway, you have to sit there and explain to your child why we're different. The same way my mom had to explain to me why we don't use the word nigger in our house. Which didn't help 
because of the time that the white girl caught me a nigger and I punched her in the mouth. And we weren't allowed to say that word before my other siblings were born. Well, my big sister and I and the younger sister, who was like barely in school, I got in trouble for hitting the white girl in the mouth. And I didn't get in trouble at the same time because once the principal figured out why I did it when I hadn't been in trouble my entire life of school until that moment, why would you do that, son? I can't say. Why? I can't say. What did she say to you? I can't say. The principal broke my guard and told me, you need to tell me, man, because I don't want to have to suspend you or expel you. And I told him, well, she called me a nigger. And before I knew what happened, I hit her in the mouth. I didn't mean to hit her in the mouth. It just was a reflex. It's just like, pow! Didn't even hit her with my strong hand. You know? But I hit her hard enough to bust her mouth. So you have to explain to your children why grandma don't like daddy. Why when we go visit grandma for a certain weekend events for our family, all the family members ostracize us because we have the color mocha skin and they're bright as light bulbs. And we have to sit over here and then when we um not looking our family members are talking about us and mom doesn't really say anything because she doesn't want to go against the family and there's another scenario why don't we ever go see that side of the family mom will have to sit down and say well when i fell in love with your father my father disowned my white ass and told me that if i'm gonna be with him and have his black babies i can never come home again that's how some families work you know this also destroys a lot of relationships. If you love someone and their ethnicity is the reason why you break up with them because your family decides that you can't procreate with him, even though you love him more than life itself, and this works against men too, even though you love her more than life itself, you can't have her babies and she can't have yours because we don't want those people in our families. We don't want that white woman in our family. We don't want that black man in our family. We don't want that Asian guy in our family. We don't want that Asian girl in our family. They may have been the love of your life. And you've had to throw them the fuck away because your families are pieces of shit. They decided to be racist. And instead of you being happy with the love of your life, you got to find a new love. Because you couldn't be with the one you wanted to be with. And instead of you being a man or a woman enough to say, Fuck the family. I love this person and I'm going to be with this person. And y'all either come around or you won't. Because that's what true love does. You fight for the one you want to be with. I learned this the hard way and it didn't work out that way for me. So I've had to move forward and I have. I've moved on. I still got pictures, but you know, I don't go gathering them because I have them to remind myself not to make this mistake ever the fuck again. You know, and you don't have to get rid of things that were good in your life, all right? But moving forward, when you have to sit there and explain to your child, because your child's like this, but when he goes to school, he's meeting kids that are like this, and the kids are like this, are like, oh, you're not really one of us. You know, you don't have our hair, you don't have our tone, you don't have our attitude. That's all about how you're being raised. If you're raised with a piss attitude, you're gonna be a pissy person. You know, and my mom has never really had to sit down and have the conversation with me about our family and why people treated me that way because I never told her. You know, it's just that simple. I never told her that people were picking on me uh, for that. And then, you know, with the learning of Native American stuff, I learned how to hone my temper. And I thank God for martial arts because it taught me that sometimes punching people in the mouth shuts them up. It also taught me that if you punch enough people, they're going to leave you alone. Somehow I know that I lost that fire when I got to high school, when I got picked on from the ninth grade to the twelfth grade. You know, and that was just the way it was. And I didn't really say anything back because actions speak louder than words. I have threatened to beat the shit out of a few people, but they weren't threats, they were bona fide promises. Which is why the class of 1993 never had a class reunion. So to the class of 1993, I apologize. It's probably my fault. But you know... No one stood up while these fuckers were picking on me. But when I stood up, I was in the wrong. Just asked Miss Jones about that one. That being said, she was also a darker skinned woman. And this is what fuels self-hatred. And I may have to make a third video. Yep, I'm going to have to make a third video about this. Because this thing's almost at the 18 minute mark. But before I go, you know, you have to understand where someone's coming from. And what they've been through 
while these young ladies are on their rage about colored women with Latins being superior to black women. So I guess that means the whites and the Asians are superior to all the women because they weren't on the list. But I'm going to go on with that in the next video.